Welcome back to another Gung Ho Dog Training video. My name is Cody from GungHoDogTraining.com and it might be a little noisy with some cars driving by but today's video is about Zoe. Uh, she is a golden retriever that I had here for a month for some very basic obedience training. And so I'm going to take you through her month and kind of give you a snapshot. Alright, here we have Zoe's very first day at the kennel. You can see her tail's kind of tucked there. She's getting to know some of the other dogs and we're really just looking for that tail to start wagging and for her to just start getting socialized with the other dogs. Now one of the first things that I do with the dogs when they're in their crate is we start um, to build some trust by having them eat food out of our hands. So I'm trying to get her to eat food out of my hands. She's obviously like um, either not hungry or just preoccupied with other things trying to get out and so I'm I'm offering that food to her but um, she doesn't seem like she wants it right now that's totally fine um, but I'm still just kind of giving it to her letting her calm down letting her see that she's not getting out of the crate right now I'm just trying to offer her some food um, she's a very energetic dog. I mean, she has a lot, a lot of energy. Um, so I did close the crate for a little bit and then I came back and now I'm starting to do a little bit of threshold training with her. Offer her some food again. She did take a piece, so that was really good. And there she goes, she gets some more. This is really good. This is a very basic foundation of building some trust between Zoe and myself which is uh, the foundation really to dog training is having a solid relationship of trust that is two ways the dog trusts me and I trust the dog so giving her some pets a lot of love and affection it's always super good and now we're gonna continue with some just the basic crate training where I'm teaching her that if I open this crate door, it doesn't mean that she gets to rush out. If we get a dog that's really big and say a little kid walks up to the crate and nobody's really paying attention and that little kid opens the crate and this big old dog comes plowing out of the crate, it's going to knock the kid over. Um, the kid might get hurt during the process. Maybe that dog's not even safe. Um, and so one of the initial things that we teach is that even though the crate door opens, that's not a release come outside. And all I'm doing is just opening and shutting the door. But I started off really small. So I opened the door just a little bit and then I would shut it. I'd open it some more. Um, then I would shut it. And you can see every time she goes um, here I'm scooting back just a little bit because that distance from the crate is also a variable. Um, but you can see when she starts to come out I just gently shut that door again and I, I'm right there to stop her from coming out. And this just takes a lot, of, a lot of patience. Right there she sat down. That was really good. That's kind of what we're looking for is the dog to Scoot back and sit down. A lot of repetition. And she has a lot of energy. She's doing really good uh, trying to hold it in. I want you guys to see kind of some reality it was just like how how long it takes and that we keep going we start off really small Zoe. now the crate door is all the way open So now a little time has gone by and I got her back in this crate 
and now I'm doing the same thing but I'm standing up this time. Every little variable that we change makes it different for the dog. And she's just starting to learn to stay in there. I can use my body language as well as moving the crate door to kind of communicate with her on what's okay and what's not okay. There are times where you need to close the gate more firm, but most of the time it's super gentle. Zoe! Okay, look at you! Good girl! Good girl! Yeah! You'll see when I release the dog from the crate, I use their name. Zoe! Okay! When they're real young, that's a great way to teach them their name, and also teaches them that their name, when they're coming out, of a threshold is a release cue. Zoe. No. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Yeah, that's a good dog. Good. Good girl. Good. Hey, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and encourage you guys to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel out. You can also subscribe and don't forget to tell your pup I say hi. All right, here we go. We're working with Zoe. She just got here and we've already done a little bit of introduction stuff. She's got those. Uh, those tags on her on her leash. I might have to take those off. They're pretty noisy. Uh, so, hey, 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 Johnny. Good. So getting her to getting her to do stuff right now is just a lot of sweet talking to her, talking real high pitch. Um, oh yeah, Chester. There you go. You see, she's a little wild. But we're going to work with that. So you have a drag line on her, just a short little rope here. And it allows her to, to walk around, but I'm going to step on it so she doesn't go exploring the whole kennel. But she's got this, this place right here to really work with me. And we're going to work on hand targeting today. So early on, with everything I'm teaching, it's all positive. So I wanted to really enjoy the learning process. Um, and I don't want to add any correction or any pressure to her until I know that she understands what, what's being asked of her. So right now she's just kind of walking around and everything. I want her to notice that I got food in my hand. She's not like crazy food motivated, um, but enough that we can work with it. So, so early on with hand targeting, you're just gonna be having her come right to your hand and giving her a piece of food. That process is gonna create a pattern in her mind that I get rewarded when my nose touches my owner's hand or my, my handler's hand. Um, so as she comes up here, she gets rewarded. Good. I'm going to start to say good, good, as soon as she touches my hand, good. Good is the marker that I'm using, I'm using it as a terminal marker, so it means she's completing the behavior, good. But I also use good as the continual marker, I've found that it's easier with clients to just tell them to say good to mark the behavior, and they have a harder time figuring out what's continual, what's terminal, um, and so we just say good. So right now she's um, at the end of the leash here. Sorry. Good. 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 Okay, now I'm gonna switch it up on her. Good. 
Good. Good. Good. Good. Switch it up again. Zoom. Good. So no food in this hand. Good. Uh, but when she touches that that hand, then she gets food from the other hand. Good. I can give it to her, or I can good. I can drop it on the ground. Either way, if you have a dog that nips real hard, you can just drop it on the ground. Hey, good. Zoe, good. But what we're doing here, good. We're rewarding her nose to touch our hand. And so as we start to do different obedience cues, like recall, or we say here, she's gonna have to come all the way back and touch her hand. And eventually we're gonna wean her off the food. And so that way uh, she's just obedient for obedience sake. And so right now, touch her. Oh, she's so close. Zoe. Good. Right now she's getting rewarded for touching my hand, but there's no food in it. Where early on it was having food in it, which was getting her good. 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 Zoe. Good. Now as you can see, this is the beginning of recall as well. She's right there. I'm gonna take a step back. Zoe. Good. We just had a little mini recall right there. Zoe. Good. Good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you are. Good. A lot of scratching, huh? Zoe. Good. All right. So that was a really good session with her. Super short, sweet. And do it one more time. Good. So it starts off real simple. Put the food in your hand. If you need to tuck it in between your fingers like this. That way they can look at it, but they can't get to it until you release it. So put your food in your hand. They'll come to it, say good, mark that behavior. Do it about 10 times until they start to get into a pattern. And then take that piece of food and put it in the other hand. Put this hand out just the same way. As soon as they touch it, mark it with your verbal marker and then give them a piece of food from the other hand. Now they're gonna to start to learn, okay, I need to just touch the hand to get the food. You do that enough, and ah, ah, Zoe, leave it. Um, she's getting into a different dog's food bag. Um, Zoe. Hey, Zoe, good girl, good girl, yeah, that's a good girl. I know. Good. Um, but yeah, it gets them into the pattern of coming to your hand, and then after that, you can switch to just having them touch your hand and then rewarding them. And to them, they're going to get to this point where they're like, well, why do I have to touch your hand? Good. Because uh, they're going to be like, you're going to give me food from the other hand, so what's the point? And if you don't <clears throat> reward that behavior, then you only reward them when... They touch your hand, good. Then they'll start to learn like, oh, I gotta touch your hand. So hand targeting, super easy, super quick, uh, really simple, it's a very foundational thing. We're still building trust with her. And tomorrow we're gonna move on to the next, the next step. Today with Zoe, we're going to be teaching light level leash pressure. So we already got her coming to our hand for hand targeting. And so now we're gonna start applying some leash pressure, getting her to respond off of the leash pressure. So what that's gonna look like, we have the leash on her like this. I'm gonna have some food in my hand. And if I just apply some light 
pressure here. As soon as she turns, come to me, good. I'll give her a piece of food. Start walking this way, pressure, good. Pressure, good. Some dogs, you know, it takes them a bit to, to pick up on that. Some dogs already have some practice from their owners before they get here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start using that to teach recall. So we've already done hand targeting and we have the leash pressure. With those two combined, we can start teaching recall. Here. Good. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to apply leash pressure, then I'm going to say, here, good. Here, good. Here, good. Okay, so we're applying leash pressure, we're saying the verbal cue, and we're marking it and we're rewarding her. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the verbal cue and the leash pressure. So I'm gonna say here, and give her a chance to come to me. If she doesn't come to me, then the leash pressure is gonna start and now then she should come to me at that point. So uh, here, good. And I can say her name as well. That usually helps them at the beginning. So we hear, good. So no leash pressure there. So we hear, good. As soon as she turns, I want to mark that behavior. So if your dog's out in the field and you say, Chester, come, or Chester, here. As soon as that dog turns to come to you, you want to be like, yeah, good dog. And reward that turning. Um, and it's going to encourage them to come all the way in. Zoe, here. She didn't come, so I started to leash pressure. Good. Zoe, here. Good girl. Good. No leash pressure that time. Zoe, here. Good girl. Zoe here. Good. Yes. Good girl. So that time I switched it up and did an actual hand target at the end there, where she touched my hand and she got food from the other hand. So let her start walking away. Zoe here. Good. Zoe here. Good girl. Good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes the dogs will get super attentive to where they'll just sit in front of you and you kind of got to start walking around and move in and get them to walk away from you. Zoe here. She's still exploring. Zoe here. Good girl. Zoe here. Good. I'm gonna do about 25 reps of this. Zoe here. Good girl. Good. It's a good dog. Yeah, that's a good dog. I'll do about 25 reps and I'll usually take a break between like five. Give it a little longer pause. Zoe here. Good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah. Good. Good girl. Good. Zoe here. Good. So that time I'm using my foot to give a little tug on the leash there. Zoe here. Good girl. 
And it's only if I need to. Hey. Good. Zoe, here. Good. Good girl. Good. Zoe, here. Good. Yes, that's a good dog. That's a good dog. Good. Good, 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 good. Let's just do a couple more here. Zoe, here. Good. Good girl. Yeah, that's a good dog. Sit. Good. Good girl. Good. Good sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Good girl. Ah, sit. Good. Good. Sit. Ah. Zoe here. Good. Good girl. Good. I'm gonna see if I can get her to go all the way on the other side of the kennel here. She's way over there, looking for this piece of food I threw. Zoe, here, good girl. Yeah, good girl. Zoe, that's a good dog. That's a good dog. Yeah, so good. Yeah, good. So that was a great little session right there. Super simple. Get her to come. She's super smart. She's progressing fast. So this is really good. On to the next one. So what I'm gonna do now with Zoe is we're gonna go outside and there's gonna be a whole different level of distraction. We're gonna do the same recall training again where I have the leash, I call her to me. If she doesn't come, then the leash pressure will start. It's real light level leash pressure. And then I reward her. I mark it and then I reward it when she comes back. So we're gonna go and do that outside. I'm not gonna film it because it's a little bit harder walking around and stuff. Um, but we always start indoors, whereas semi low level distraction, then we'll go outside, it's a little more distracting. And then from there, we just keep adding more and more distraction to continue to teach the behavior. Um, but she's doing really well. Zoe, here. Good girl, oh, that's a good girl, yeah. Good girl, break. Zoe here. Good girl. I can step on it or I can hold on to it. Zoe here. Good girl. Zoe here. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, you're such a good girl. Good morning. Uh, we are. This morning we are moving on to the next step of training with Zoe and that process is called the 360 sit. And so we want to get Zoe to where she can sit down and stay seated with us moving around and walking away from her and her learning that when we say sit, it also means to stay there permanently until we tell her to do what's next. Um, so have her on this tether right now, which is basically just, she's a little wild this morning, uh, but just keeping her from running off. I'm going to switch her to this leash. And the first thing we do is we want to make sure that Zoe knows how to sit. And so we're going to try to do that with the least amount of pressure as possible. We're just going to use food here. Um, so I'm just letting her know I have food in my hands. Now I'm just going to lift it up above her head. Good. So we sit. Good. Important that I let her calm down before I reward her. Zoe, sit. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. So 
Now I'm trying to get her to stay there. Sit. Good girl. Good. Sit. Drew, leave it. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Just move my feet just a little bit. Good. Sit. Zoe, sit. Good. 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 Sit. Sit. Okay. Break. So I think she understands what sit means. Um, we're going to do one more test here with her. So we sit. Sit. Good. So, no pressure on the leash, just saying the verbal cue, the dog does the behavior. Now we know she's got it. So now we can apply a little bit of leash pressure um, to help her out. So I want this leash to be up on the back of her head right here. All we're going to be doing is pull him straight up. So we sit. As soon as she sits down, I give a, a quick release on the leash, which is going to tell her to sit down. Sit. Good. I'm also going to tell her to sit and give her a little pop on the leash just to remind her, sit. Good. Sit. Good. Good girl. Sit. Taking a step. Good. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Sit. Ah, sit. Good. I can start to use a verbal correction as well, which I just say ah as a verbal correction. Good girl. Sit. 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 Good. Sit. 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 Good. No. Sit. Sit. I don't want any of her paws to move at all. The end goal is I'm going to be able to walk all the way around her and none of her paws are going to move. <coughs> Sit. <coughs> so as we start, start advancing, if she gets up, Pressure turns on. As soon as she sits down, pressure turns off. Very, very clear to her. Pressure on, pressure off with the leash. Now I tell the difference is with the buckle. So when the buckle clips to her leash, if the buckle's flipped down, there's no pressure. If the buckle's up, there's pressure. Rear, leave it. Leave it. Rue's playing with her. Food dish. Sit. I just fed all the dogs breakfast, so some of them still have their food dishes. Sit. Good. Sit. Sit. Good. Ah. Sit. 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 Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good. Ah. Sit. Good. Sit. 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 Good. Sit. Ah, ah, ah. Sit. 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 Good. Good girl. Sit. Good. Sit. Sit. Ah, ah. Leave it. Sit. Sit. A little bit of distraction there. Sit. But we're using it for training. Drop the drop the tree pouch. Sit. 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 Good. No. Good. No. Sit. Good. Good. The only way that I can give her corrections like this when she already knows what sit. She already knows what sit means. Sit. If I just start giving her corrections, she's not going to understand what's going on. Sit. Sit. 
So I've been able to do a 180, sit 180 degrees, that's what I mean by that. Coming all the way over to your left side, sit. No, sit, 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 sit. And then coming over to, I guess it would be my right side on here, sit. So that's where we start. Start from one side. Good, sit. Good. No, sit. As long as she's sitting, she's getting food. If she's getting up, she's getting pop on the leash. Sit down. Sit. 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 Good. Good. Sit. 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 I'm going to try something here. Sit. 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 Good. Good girl. Good. Sit. 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 Good. Sit. Good. Good girl. Good. Break. Good. Another girl. Good. Good girl. So we sit. You were nuts. Sit. Good. Good. No. Sit. Good. Sit. 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 Good girl. Good girl. So now in the first full 360 right there. I helped her out a ton. Super close to her. Gave her food. Sit. Now I'm going to try a little bit farther back. Sit. Sit. Now. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. Sit. Ah. Sit. 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 Good. Sit. 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 It's right about two o'clock or so for her that she freaks out a little bit. Sit. 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 Ah. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. Good girl. Sit. Ah. Sit. Good. Sit. So when I walk behind her, she can move her head all she wants. If I don't want her to move her paws. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. Good girl. Sit. I'm gradually just getting farther and farther out on the leash. I still have enough that I can give her a, a correction. Good. Sit. 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 Ah, uh, ah. Uh, sit. 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 Good girl. Good. Good. Good girl. Good girl. I feel like that was pretty good for this session. Trying to push your limits a little bit of attention span. Um, but. We'll try it again in the next session and see how she does. Remember, I'm not recording every session I do with her, but trying to give you guys little glimpses of steps along the way that are showing her improvement. And so the next session is going to look very similar. I'll try to record it for you. Um, but know that you're not seeing every single time I work with her. Um, but she's doing really good. She's a fun pup. So we break. Come on.
Okay, our next step in this process is to teach and condition kennel, um, and that's going into the crate. We haven't taught place training yet, and so right now kennel to her just means to go into the crate. And the way we've been doing it actually is every meal, she has to go into her crate and then she gets fed. So she's been positively reinforced every day, twice a day, with a pretty big drive of hunger to go into this kennel. Um, and so every time when the dogs, other dogs come in, they're already in a routine. And so she's kind of followed that routine. That's why it's been helpful to train her in this environment. Um, and as she comes in, I say the word kennel, and then she gets food after she goes inside there. Um, and that's just been the pattern that we have. And so if she comes back out, um, I can test this now and see if she has understood the behavior. Zoe, kennel. Good. So that there is all positive reinforcement. Ah, 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 kennel. Good, good girl, good. Last time I waited for her to sit down. Kennel, good. Ah, ah, good, good girl, good. So we can see that we already have a really good understanding of what kennel is, even staying inside of there. Break. So now we can condition that behavior. So I'm gonna to go to the collar, e-collar. I'm gonna be on a level one. I'm gonna be on a continuous until she goes into the kennel. And we're gonna have her out here. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the pressure on. So I kennel. Turn the pressure off as soon as she gets in there, and then I'll give her a piece of food. Good, break. She comes out, pressure on. Enjoy kennel. Pressure off. Ah, uh -huh. kennel. Kennel. Good girl. Good. Uh, she's getting a little overstimulated right now, so she's not taking food. That's pretty normal for some dogs. Um, and so instead of giving her food, I'm gonna give her a lot of praise. I'm gonna give her pets. I'm gonna slow down the training just a little bit so that I can work at her pace. Break. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl, yeah. Hello, baby. Yeah, good girl. Good. Continue pressure on, kennel, and off. Good girl. Oh, that's a good dog. Are you interested in food? Pressure on, so I count. Pressure off. Are you interested? So at this point, she's not interested in food anymore. At the beginning, she was kind of taking it from me, but I'm gonna put the food back, and we're gonna just switch to just being super happy with her, giving her praise, because we've gotta be able to work through this, but even the low level one is just like too much uh, stimulation to her to where she's not thinking about eating. Her mind has switched into a different mindset. And so we're just gonna take it slow, but we're gonna keep working with her. My goal for this step is to start the continuous pressure and to see her just walk into the kennel out of pattern and out of habit of feeling this and then going in there. And that would be this stage of the conditioning break. Oh, that's a good girl. Good, good. Pressure on. Kennel, and then pressure off. So that's pretty long for a continuous. I don't like to do it much longer than that. I try to keep it in a small environment. If she were to do that and then start to walk away from me, I would need to have a leash on it. At this point, she's working really good with me, but if there's any point where you're trying to do continuous pressure and then the dog decides to walk away, that you're gonna be putting that on for too long. And so. This step right here should be fairly quick, and then we move on to the next one, which I'll show you, but we gotta get her to get past this one. Good girl, good, break. Her recalls are doing really good. Good girl, Zoe. Yeah, girly. Yeah, good girl. Okay, pressure is on. Good girl. Oh, that's a good dog. 
Good, right? So here. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, good. So that time I tried to wait a little bit. Uh, no pressure this time until we count. Good. So here. Oh, look at you. Yeah. So we count. Good girl. So here. Oh, that's a good dog. Okay. Continuous pressure. Good. Continuous pressure off. On. And it's off. It's on again. And she came all the way back out. And it's off. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Great. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Good. So now watch this. She's going to be right around here. I'm going to start. She's going to be right around here. I'm going to start the pressure. You see the green light on. Zoe. Come on. Good. Good girl. Break. Oh, that's a good job. Good. Good. A little bit long right there. She's not quite like responding as quickly as I would want her to. She obviously understands when I tell her Kimmel. And, and so I'm going to go up to a two, but I'm going to have her right here close to me and just see what type of response I get from her at a little bit higher level on the collar. So we break. And we're on. Good. Good. Pressure on. Zoe Kimmel. Pressure off. Good. Good girl. Break. Pressure on. Zoe Kennel. Pressure off. Good. Good. I just beat it just to make sure it's still on, it's still working. Zoe, here. Oh, that's a good dog job. Yeah. It's important to see her tail wing. If she starts to shut down at all, then I need to take a break. You need to slow down. So, pressure on. She's so smart. Pressure back on as she came back out. And then pressure off. Ah, uh -huh. kennel. <clears throat> good, good, Joe. Break. Good. Pressure's on. Right about there. That's that's pretty darn good. Um, she's feeling the pressure on the collar. I did give her a step towards the collar. I didn't give any hand gestures. I didn't say anything. But it's very clear to me that she's super smart. She understands what kennel is. She's feeling that pressure as she's going in, and then it shuts off, and she comes back out, and the pressure turns on, and then she goes back out. And so that's really what I'm looking for at this stage, where I can put that continuous pressure on, and then she responds to it. I need it a little bit better to where I just apply that pressure, and she just walks in. And so we're gonna see if we can get there. She's still doing good as far as mentally and everything. Um, so we wanna see. We can go a little bit further. Good. Break. <clears throat> so here. Good girl. Look at you. You're such a good dog. Yes, you are. You're such a good dog. Yes, you are. Good, Zoe. Here. Good girl. Good. 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 Here. Good. Good girl. Good. <clears throat> okay, so that last one was pure, just e-collar pressure, and she went in on her own. Um, so I'm going to graduate her from this step in the training process. And the next step that we're going to move to is, instead of continuous pressure, there's going to be the verbal cue and then a nick afterwards. And what happens there is we're going to be able to transition from that to eventually not having any e-collar pressure and the nick only comes if there's a delay in her getting there, and that's either from her going too slow or deciding to do something different. Um, basically, a, a disobedience. Um, and so it's out of the correction. But at this point, she's doing super good. So we here. Good girl. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, you're doing okay. Good girl. You're a good dog. Good. So right off the bat, we're just going to go back to the one, because we know we, we know she feels that, and we're going to say Zoe Kennel, and give a one tap Nick, good girl, good, good girl, 
Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good. Zoe here. Good. Zoe kennel. And then a one tap neck on there. Good girl. Let me see if I can show you on here. There's a little green light that comes up. Zoe here. Good girl. Oh, that's a good dog. Good dog. Okay, watch for the green light. Zoe kennel. She kind of took her time, but I gave her that space. I didn't like get right on there, but I gave her that space to kind of figure it out. I'm gonna try that again. And this is a good, a good, I don't know, five feet away. Zoe here. Good girl. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Good. Zoe, camel. Good girl, Zoe. Ah, 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 ah. Camel. Good girl, okay, yeah. Good girl, good girl. Oh, you're such a good dog. Big old spider. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so that's a good session for today. Uh, we went through the continuous pressure of conditioning, and now we're doing the Nick uh, pressure. And what's gonna happen uh, now is I'm gonna have her sent to this kennel farther and farther away, and then we're gonna go outside we're gonna do the same process. It's super windy today, so it'd be super loud for you guys. Uh, and then we're gonna have dogs out in here. We're gonna have dogs out outside and have her go into the kennel in here and outside with all those distractions. And eventually, I'm also gonna put a food bowl down here, uh, probably right before meal time. I'm gonna have her sit out here on the floor. I'm gonna put a food bowl down right here and I'm gonna send her to the kennel. I'm gonna say kennel, I'm gonna give her a nick and she's gonna to have to go past that food bowl and go into the kennel. And then when she goes into the kennel, I'll pick up the food and I'll put it in the kennel and reward her. Um, at that point, um, she's gonna have a really solid basic foundation of going into the crate with the verbal cue kennel. And then we'll move on to the next step. And so I'll show you guys that now. Good girl. So here. Look at you. Yeah, look at you, Vinny. Good, good. Zoe, count. Ah, 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 count. Zoe, count. Count. Good. Good girl. Good. Zoe, here. Add a girl. Add a girl. Yeah, good job. Good job. Zoe, count. Count. No, count. Good girl, good. 
Starting positive place training with Zoe. Uh, she's at the point where we just finished sending her to a kennel uh, from a distance outside, and she's doing really good with that. And that was using e collar pressure because she's already learned it, we conditioned it, um, and now we're just for the first time introducing place training. And so she's starting to just learn right now that the click means that there's food that's coming. Good. That a girl. And then as she starts to explore, uh, we're gonna be free shaping this behavior. Um, and so we wanna make sure that she kind of starts to brainstorm on her own. Break, break, break. So if she steps on there, if she gives any attention to the place board, we're going to reward it. Good girl. I am learning her just a little bit because I have food in my hand. We want to see her try to problem solve this. How do I get that food? getting off, that didn't work, she's looking for some on the ground, she's sitting next to it, we've really conditioning, conditioned sitting, so it's natural for her to try to sit down to see if, if she can get something from that, good girl, she's not really cueing into the clicker um, as well as I would hoped, good girl, good, front two paws down, but we're looking for the, the back paws, all four paws to be up on the place for it. And I can lure her, I can help her out. trying to get that last the last paw on there. Good girl. Add that girl. Good. Good. Good girl. Good. Yeah. Right now she did that and then start to add in the verbal cue to tie it with the behavior. Break. So, kennel. 
Good girl. Good. Break. Good. Zoe Kell. Good. Notice I'm clicking when she gets on there, which is a marker, and then also sitting down on there is another marker. Zoe Kell. Sit. Good. Girl, break. Oh, girl, good. So you count. Good, good girl. So you count. Good, break. So you count. Oh yeah, break. We're cooking now. So you count. Good, good girl, break. There we go, good. Zoe Kemmel. Yes, good girl, good. Break. Zoe, break. This is awesome. She's so fast. Zoe Kemmel. Yes, good girl. Good, good. Break. All right, all right, all right, all right. Zoe Kemmel. No, uh uh. Zoe Kemmel. Good girl, good, good, break. All right, I think we're done because she's, I mean, she just left that piece of food on the floor. Um, she just made a huge improvement. Um, I'm able to say kennel to her, so we kennel and point to it and good, good girl. And she gets up on there, that's, Huge progress today. Um, really short, short session. Some sessions are a lot longer than others. Some of them are super short. But it's important for me to end right here on that positive note because if we keep working, she's going to start to be like, "Well, is there something else I need to do?" Or is this all that you're looking for? So, good girl. Good job. Yeah. All right. On to the next session. Good girl, Zoe. Good girl, Zoe. Good girl. Zoe, break. All right, there's a little bit of a jump in the training videos um, just because I got pretty sick last week. Um, I didn't film anything, but I was out here working with Zoe every day. I just, uh, yeah, I was super stuffed up and everything. And so what we ended up doing was we, we had taught her to get on the, the place board. And then I conditioned it with the collar um, to where now I can tell her to get onto um, the place board. I can give her a nick and she'll get up on there. Um, then I taught her to lay down. Um, the simple way to teach a dog to lay down is to take a piece of food, um, have it out in front of you like this, bring your hand down to the ground, and then simply wait for the dog's elbows to Hit the ground. Good. And then you give them that piece of food. And so I taught her to lay down, and then I taught her the verbal cue to go along with it, and I conditioned it with the e collar, and now she's doing really good. Um, and now we're working on here, he'll sit, but I wanted to show you kind of just these couple things that we've been doing. Uh, Zoe, sit. Good. Kennel. Good. Good girl. Good. So here. So down. No. Down. Good. Ah, down. Good. Good girl. Good. Break. Down. Starting to do here, heel, sit, and that process looks like this. So we here, heel, sit, good, hey, good. So here, she is so distracted. I mean, this 
this is how it's just kind of been this whole time. It's just like blah, 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 all over the place. And it's just a matter of trying to contain that and kind of give it a direction of where to go. But her brain is just kind of all over the place. Um, and she figures it out, but it's a little chaotic at times. Zoe, break. Zoe, kennel. Good, sit. So I'm gonna use the kennel to have her stay in the spot. And I'm gonna release her, do here, heel, sit, and then get her to lay down. Zoe, here. Heel, sit, good. Down, good, good. Zoe, kennel, good, sit. Another thing she's doing is this. When I tell her to lay down, she kind of walks around a little bit. Zoe, here, heel, sit, good girl, good. Down, see how she kind of walks around. Down, good, good girl. And a way we can work on that is with the leash or a rope. So I'm going to take this rope, put it on my collar. And remember, I've worked this all with the e-collar already. So I can put the e-collar back on it and continue to condition these behaviors. In fact, I should, um, and I will. It's just today we're doing something new with the heel, and so... Kill. Sit. <clears throat> so now I have this leash to stop her from, from walking. Zoe here. Heel. Sit. Good. Good. So I got her in sit position. I'm going to drop my left hand and put my foot over the leash. Sheesh. You're so funny. Um, and obviously she knows that pattern, so she already knows to lay down. Zoe here, heel, sit, good, sit, sit, good, good girl, good. Use my foot as a lever here, down, good. That's exactly what we want. We want straight down to the ground, we don't want her walking around. So I can use the leash to work with her to stop that from happening. And so basically we're gonna keep doing, Zoe, break. We're gonna keep doing downs with the e-collar to condition it. We're gonna do downs with a, a location permanence with stain. Um, and then we're gonna take it outside. We're gonna do downs with some more distractions. Um, you saw there's a quick video of her on the place board with the other dogs playing and I was using the e-collar so as soon as she stepped off I would apply low level continuous pressure until she got back on. And you can see she really wanted to get off and play and she was also kind of frustrated that she had to stay on there um, and so she was a little like a little little under the thumb there but there it's good to have that in part of the training where it's not all just Fun and happy that there's sometimes where it's like, hey, you got to do this thing, and uh, but then keeping our relationship really healthy um, is always super important throughout that process. So um, yeah, so we're gonna get her to lay down uh, outside with some distractions and stay there, <clears throat> and then we're gonna do a little bit of leash walking work, and then she's actually going home in a couple days. So this was a month of training, um, working with Zoe. And uh, there's a lot of work that I did with her that I didn't get to film, but you guys got to see kind of a general process of what a month looks like with a, a golden retriever anyways that is kind of young and uh, a little wild. But uh, she did really awesome. If I could have a lot more dogs like her, I would, I would take them. Um, she's a great dog. So thank you guys for watching. Um, feel free to uh, continue to follow the videos as we post more, and we'll see you later. Tell your pup I say hi. <laughs>